Generally, we model the structures in ETABs. While modeling, we model the slabs, beams and columns. Beams and columns, we do it normally. When we model the slab, we have two options. Whether we need to model the slab as numbering or shelving. Hey friends, welcome back to Civil Engineering Mastery. In this video, we are going to look into how we can model the slab as a membrane as well as shelving. And let's discuss the differences between membrane slab as well as the shelving slab. So without further ado, let's begin now. Let's start off with defining the slab property. Here I have modeled the structure and I have defined the beam property and column property. If we go to define and look into the section properties, frame sections and then I have the beam and column defined already. Now let's define the slab. Go to define section properties. Under this you have to select the slab section. So let's add the new property. Let's name it as slab membrane. Let's select the property material property as M25 that is the grade of concrete and then here modeling type let's choose membrane. And then thickness, let's give the thickness as 150 mm. Give OK. So if you look into this, we have uh, three floors, ground floor, first floor and second floor. Now let me choose the ground floor. Now we can draw the slabs. Before that, let's go to edit, edit story and then modify story data. So here we can change this ground floor as a master stories. And then uh, these two, first floor and second floor as a similar stories so that whatever the changes we make in the ground floor that will be replicated to the first floor and second floor as well so this saves more time now before drawing the slab what we can do here is you can select the option as similar stories and then select this quick draw option select the property as slab membrane just click on this you will be getting the slabs now let's add the loads. Now let's add the loads. Go to define load patterns. Let's add the main wall, super dead load, add new load and then select partition wall load. Give add new load and then give OK. Let's go to define load. Let's add floor finish sulfate multiplier as zero, add new load and then live load is already there. Give OK. Now we can assign the load. Let's select all the outer beams for the main wall load. See this similar story option is very helpful. Now all the stories outer beams have been selected. Go to assign and then under frame loads you have to select distributor. Let's select main wall load. Let the direction of load application be gravity and then let's give the load as 12 kN per meter. Give apply OK. So the load has been assigned for all the floors. If you want to check, you can flow now. It is in first floor and then second floor. Now again, I have kept in ground floor view. Let's go to assign. Let's select these interior beams. Go to assign frame loads distributor and then let's give six. Here we have to select the partition wall and then six apply. OK, so it is done. Next, let's go to assign and then shell load uniform first let's select the slabs and then assign the loads so the slabs has been selected now we have to select the floor finish as 1.5 kN per meter square give apply ok it has been assigned give the previous selection option and then again go to assign shell load uniform select live load then give to apply ok now let's do the analysis before analysis let's give the check model option select all give ok there is no warning messages we can just do the analysis now analysis has been completed we have completed the slab modeling as a membrane now let's model the slab as shell thin and then we can compare the results go to define and then under section property select slab section add new property slab shell thin and then m25 here also modeling type shell thin here in shell thin we can use the modifiers because it takes the stiffness whereas 
in the membrane slab the stiffness is zero here we can use the stiffness modifier as 0.25 as per is 1893 so other than mass and weight all the direction we can add the stiffness modifiers give ok and slab thickness we can change it to 150 mm give ok now we can go to this quick draw option select the property as slab shell thin and then just click on this you will get the slabs and in shell thin we can add the meshing options auto meshing we can add go to assign under shell you can go with the floor auto mesh option and here you can just select this one auto key cut object into structural element here you can uncheck these options and here let's give the size as 1000 mm that is 1 meter and then apply ok meshing is done next loading part let's follow the loading part which we have done before i have added all the loading details similar to the previous case and i have assigned the loads as well if you want to look into it go to display go to load assign and then frame select main wall apply ok so that will be visible and again if you wanted to look into the shell load go to display load assign shell and then uh, let's look into the live load give apply ok so that that will show you the live load which we have assigned so now the loading part is done let's do the analysis before analysis let's check the model now we can do the analysis analysis has been done now let's compare the results of the membrane as well as the shell thin slabs see now we have the membrane slab as well as shell thin model first let's get the deformed shape pores and stress diagram under this shell stresses and forces so we are getting the slab values just i'm selecting m22 apply ok we look at the stress diagram for the membrane slab since it is not taking more stresses it is transferring all the load to the beams in the similar manner let's go to display let's select m22 give apply ok see now you can see the difference between these two in this slab thin option the loads will be taken by the slab itself because slab has its own stiffness and then it transfer the remaining loads into the beams remaining loads to the beams whereas in membrane slab all the loads will be transferred to the supporting members supporting members here is the beams so all the loads will be getting transferred to the supporting member so that is why the stiffness of the membrane slab is zero whereas the shell thin slab has the stiffness values let's look into the other direction as well go to display m on one apply ok similarly here let's go to display apply ok now look into the stress diagram so from this itself you can come to know membrane slab is not taking any of the loads it, it transfers all the loads and stresses to the supporting members whereas the shell thin slab takes certain amount of loads and then it transfer the remaining loads to the supporting members since the stiffness of the membrane slab is zero we are not applying the stiffness modifier in the membrane slab whereas in shell thin slab it has stiffness so that is why we are applying the stiffness modifier in the shell thin slab in this the meshing cannot be done in shell thin slab we can do the auto meshing if we do the manual meshing in membrane slab it changes the load transfer pattern now let's compare the beam forces just right click on this beam so here we have the moment shear force equivalent loads so the moment is 6.43 shear is 11.63 and then equivalent load is 8.3 let's do the same thing over here look into the difference it is 5.8 this is shell thin and this is membrane since it transfer all the loads to the beams we have more moment values and in shell thin it takes some moments the slab itself takes some moments and then it transfers the remaining moment to the beams and then shear is 10.4 equivalent load is 2.58 so in this way the membrane slab and the shell thin slab has differences 
So let's summarize once again. In the membrane slab, stiffness is zero. It will not take any moment or loads. Whereas the shell-thin slab has its own stiffness and it takes the moments and loads and then it transfers the remaining load to the supporting members. Meshing cannot be done in the membrane slab whereas the shell thin slab we can do the meshing. Since the stiffness is zero we cannot apply the property modifiers in the membrane slab. We can apply the property modifier in the shell thin slab since it has its own stiffness. Now the question is where we have to use the membrane slab and where we have to use the shell thin slab. You can use the membrane slab where you have the staircase area or you have some equipment needs to be placed on the slab that loads need to be completely transferred to the supporting members. In that case you can go for the membrane slab. In other normal cases and all you can go with the shell thin slab. And you have to use these two options wisely. So if you are using membrane slab then you have to design the beams accordingly. Similarly if you are using the shell thin slab the slab and beam needs to be designed accordingly because the shell thin slab takes a moment and then it transfer to the beams. So you have to design the slab accordingly and then beam according to the shell thin slab. Similarly if you are going with the membrane slab you have to design the slab and beam according to the membrane slab. So you have to stick to any one of the approach which you are following. So I would recommend you to use these options wisely wherever you required and then and try to understand the difference between the membrane and the shell thin slab. So that's all about this membrane and shell thin slab. So friends I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box. The comments are always welcome and don't forget to subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.